On the 22nd of June, he is to fight the present holder, a man he's already defeated, Joe Lewis. The backdrop was simple. A heavyweight fight with a title on the line, featuring a pair of boxers who'd squared up once before. On one side, 24-year-old Joe Lewis, a young man looking to avenge defeat. Well, I, this one is all right, but this one is all right, too. On the other, a 32-year-old Max Schmeling, a former champ. Max Schmeling is in New York to train for his long-anticipated crack at the World Heavyweight title. But what made the fight on June 22nd, 1938 so special was nearly everything else surrounding it. Lewis was just the second African-American to become heavyweight champ, beating James Braddock to take the title in 1937. He became a symbol of what black Americans could become, more than 20 years before the civil rights movement began to make inroads. Schmeling was the complicated champion of Nazi Germany, a man who once raised the Nazi salute after beating an American in Hamburg, a guy who had tea with Hitler, but also a man with a Jewish American manager for all of his fights in the States. For Lewis, that meant not only trying to top a man who knocked him out in the 12th round of their previous bout in 1936. After the second round, I was very sure I had in my hand. But also representing America at a time when fears of a second world war were building by the day. In fact, after the fight contract was signed, Lewis visited the White House where President Franklin D. Roosevelt was quoted in the New York Times as saying, Joe, we need muscles like yours to beat Germany. Lewis became invigorated by the challenge. I will take care of him on night June the 22nd. In front of 70,000 in Yankee Stadium, Joe Lewis pounded Schmeling for two minutes and four seconds. It wasn't even a contest. Lewis forced the German down three times before finally knocking him out before the first round bell rang. I waited two years for the revenge and now I have it. It's estimated that 100 million heard the fight on radio around the world. Lewis defended his title and served as a piece of American propaganda at the same time. Joe, I want to congratulate you on your great victory tonight. You're a great champion. I predict you'd knock him out in one round and you'd done it. Their next fight was against a coalition. Lewis and Schmeling would enlist in their respective armies when the war began. Schmeling was a paratrooper who was wounded in battle. Lewis never saw active combat, but both would lead boxing exhibitions for their fellow troops. Following the war, Lewis would return to the ring and end up defending his title a record 25 times before his retirement in 1949. While Schmeling would live until age 99 and die a millionaire, Lewis would end up living out his days in Las Vegas as a greeter at Caesar's Palace. His handlers took most of the nearly $5 million in winnings he had earned. By the time Lewis died in 1981, he barely had a nickel to his name. But what he earned in respect from his peers and his country meant his name will live on. His record set of the ring may never be broken. And one of his finest moments will always be remembered for what it meant to the country on the brink. <laughs>